Hey everyone, welcome back to another video and why not start things off with a amazing update to Dialis X64, the N64 emulator for the PS Vita and we have version 0.5, a stable working version with a bunch of updates, a bunch of fixes and it's just crazy. This emulator just keeps getting better and better and we were having issues with 0.4 because it kept crashing we weren't able to go into the emulator. We kept getting this error and we had to go back to either the nightly build or version 0 0.3, 0.2 or 0.1, which are working just fine. So just make sure to back up those VPKs and just have them somewhere safe. That way, if the new versions start to crash, we can always go back to those older ones. And with this version, we have a lot of crazy updates. Let's go to our desktop here. We are at the psxplace.com and I'll have that link in the description down below for you. Along with the link to the VPK, if you don't have like Homebrew Browser or Easy VPK installed, which I highly recommend installing. That way you can install or update any of these uh, applications easily through those apps and you don't have to go through your computer. You can just access your uh, internet connection through Wi-Fi download it, update it, and you're good to go. So back on PSX Place, they explain a lot of different changes to the emulator, and it's insane what this developer has been doing lately. And one of the big changes is that we can now have the network loading of ROMs supported on this emulator. What does that mean? You can basically run ROMs off the network on this version, so it's, it's crazy. You don't have to like download stuff and copy it over to your SD card. You can just run it off the network, save your states on your console. And this is almost gonna be like a two part video where this is part one where we talk about the updates and we go through some of the changes. Not everything obviously, cause it's just gonna take too much time. And you can just look through it yourself. Like I said before, I'll have the link to this in the description so you can go through every little detail. And we're just going to go through the major uh, changes, right? Part two video is going to focus on the web server setup for loading the ROMs over the network. So that way you can play it on your emulator here on your Vita. And here are the full details. Whoops, sorry, let's go back. So here's how you load the ROMs through the web server. And hopefully I'll get this video done for you in a few days. And it shouldn't be too complicated, but we'll go through it together and figure it out. So here are all of the changes to version 0.5 release. And it says it adds a lot of new features like loading ROMs over the network, ROM lister filtering, searching, post-processing shaders, overlay, playtime tracking, etc. Also a lot of bug fixes on the renderer and several optimizations to the code had been done making the emulator have better performances in general. I think I read that wrong, but look at all of these changes. Look at that. Improvements, optimizations, fixes, ads, supports. Look at that. That's just, it's massive. Going to the some highlights tab, we now have overlay supports. So we can have these like nice looking overlays while we're playing the game. That way it's not looking too bad. Or if you want to change the ratio, the aspect ratio of the display and have an overlay. That's pretty cool. We'll go through that. And network loading ROMs. See guide here. We just looked at that. Storage issues for your ROMs. The Atlas X64 now adds possibility to launch ROMs over net, both local and online. That's nuts. Post-processing shaders had been added. Two, Dialis X64, you can see the available ones here. Customizable post-processing effects. Cool. Let's go back on our Vita. And like I said, you can update it through uh, Vita Homebrew Browser. And I just did that. So here's version 0.5. And just hit the download and it will automatically update for you and not removing your ROMs or anything like that. The update is also available through Easy VPK. Here it is, the Atlas X64 version 0.5. Very good. And now let's check out the emulator. OK. 
Okay, so we have downloading compatibility list database. I'm going to move my screen here so that we have a better look at what's going on. Wow, it uh, loaded all of my games. Interesting. So we now have kind of the nightly build feel to this version. Very nice, it looks super clean. I love that logo on the bottom. And as you go through your games, you will have the thumbnails or the box art and the information down below. And if you are having a problem with that, you can just go to options and you want to use your left trigger to select that, open that up and download data files. That worked for me and it just started loading all this information of those ROMs. And here is where we're going to be using that web server to load our games. But we'll do that in another video. So as this is your first time looking at Dialis X64, I'll go through it real quick for you. On the right side, obviously we see the uh, box artwork of that game or ROM that we're looking at. And down below you'll have the game name, the region, the, your playtime. Now we have a new line of playtime. That's pretty cool. And also with, let's see here, the CRC, the SIC type, the ROM size, save type, tags. And tags is very important. You'll see that some of them have like green, purple, orange. And the green ones say playable which means that the games can be played from start to finish or start to end with playable performances. And then we have another tag saying slow game is playable, but still not full speed. And there is a link where you'll, you can see all the games that are working or not working on this uh, emulator. And I'll have that reference down in the description below. So you can go see if some of your games that you want to get on your Vita will work or not and that way you don't have to waste your time uh, because whatever it's tagged that's pretty much what's gonna happen to you uh, it's either gonna be working 100% like I have no problem playing Super Smash Bros at 60 frames it's nuts how how well that game plays so let's take a look at the different options here and you can use your touch screen to move the mouse pointer and that's one thing I kind of don't like is I have to kind of depend on this little guy to go through the different options, which I'm not a big fan of. And you can obviously use your analog stick too, which I'm even a worse fan of with the analog of just, you have to be, it's just so sensitive. But at the top right hand corner, we have the version 0 0.5 and you can tap the touch screen to access those uh, drop down options from each of these. Uh, using X will not do anything, square won't do anything, triangle and circle. So it doesn't really do anything. Pressing start doesn't do nothing, select doesn't do anything, and the right analog doesn't do anything. Uh, using your D-pad, it'll just take you to the search uh, bar there with the filter. Going up and down will access your ROMs going back up all right so let's go to options and see what we got we got download data files custom roms path unused web server unused retrieve web server rom list at boot sort roms from a to z or z to a and playtime and we have emulation we have the cpu high level emulation expansion pack frame limit sync video rate sync audio rate and you can play around with these settings to see if you'll get a better performance with some of these uh, games and here's our aspect ratio 16 by 9 16 by 9 unstretched 4 3 original i will stick to original and you can't really press x or circle circle will take you back uh, let's go back here uh, triangle, nothing, square, nothing. I guess square will just take you back to the top. But you want to hit the left trigger button to 
to make that selection. Let's go back to aspect ratio. Now it's on original. One thing I don't like about that is once I select that, it kind of closes everything out and I'm like, oh, I have to go back now to see uh, what else I want to change. So there's the brightness, the render, textures, caching, bilinear filter, anti aliasing <laughs> always have a hard time pronouncing that and overlays this is really cool so let's use one of the overlays here and I want to use the Dialys X64 let's go back to graphics and you'll now see the Dialys X64 check marked and mip maps high res textures vsync for the most part I know I did say you can mess with these settings to see if it would give you a better performance but for the most part if you're not familiar with how these settings work i just leave everything as is as default and that's what i do usually i just see how it runs the way it, you know set up and go from there input language very good we have all these different languages so we have dutch dusk katala espanol Looks like uh, Ukrainian or Russian or something like that. Francis, Italiano, Polsky, and Portuguese. And extra, we have save global settings, UI theme. Oh, let's take a look here. We have light. Ooh, not a big fan of that one. Let's change it to classic. Uh, I don't like that one. Let's go back to dark. There we go. I like that. Scale UI text. What does that do? Oh, look at that. We have now we have a chunkier text. I like that. I like that one better actually. It's good for my eyes. And you can just check mark that again and take it back to the original. Very good. Auto update at boot. Very very nice. Update compat compat list at boot. Debugger, console logs, texture, dumpers, and credits. So now let's run a game here and see what happens I like to run Super Smash Bros because it runs so smooth and I just pressed X on the ROM and now it's going to start it you'll see the yellow text on the bottom and there's the overlay that is so sick that is awesome look at look how smooth that runs it's buttery smooth and I do have this plugin that shows the frames per second and how well your CPU is performing. And if you're interested in something like that, it's called, it's like an overclock plugin. Well, it's not like, it is an overclock plugin. And you can overclock your CPU and your GPU here uh, and run better performance. So I like to max it out. I save the profile and I go back. And I can open up different uh, different styles up in the corner there. You can have the little window, or you can have just the frame sitting at the corner, which I usually do while I'm playing these games. And I'll add the music here. Let's do Kirby. The sounds are not going to be 100%, so just keep that in mind. Like this one, it's much more. Looks good to me. And you can touch the touch screen here, open up your menu, and use your finger. Let's go to graphics. And we'll go to our overlays. Let's try the N64. And now it changed to N64. Nice. Let's go back to the graphics and try the last overlay. Trinitron. So we have the Sony. Oh, that's so cool. Check that out. Nice. Well, that is it for this one, guys. I really wanted to just do a quick video and cover the latest update to Dialys X64. And I appreciate you guys watching. And if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please comment down below. And I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Take care. And I'll see you guys on the next one.
Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoy my content, please hit that subscription button here on my face and that notification bell so you don't miss a video in the future. And if you're looking for PSP content, I have that playlist right here for you. And PS Vita content right down below, that full playlist. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.